Sometimes if you start a renovation and you don't finish it, it can be dangerous. Take Albie. You're right. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Six months ago, we started renovating the living room. And it's just driving me mental. Well, I can see that. Now, Albie and Tammy have three young kids. One's about to crawl. And he's got live electrical hanging from the ceiling. He's got nails and staples sticking up out of the floor. And he's knocked out a structural wall. It's crazy. It is crazy. Albie and Tammy are supposed to get married in about four months. But if I don't teach them how to get this done properly and safely, I don't think the marriage is going to happen. If you have me, you brought nothing. All right, Tammy, show me the mess. This is it, Brian. I am left with hydro wires hanging here. My kids are going to get electrocuted. I have no floor. I have a baby that is about to learn to crawl. The ceiling, I don't know what the hell is going on there. One of the first things I noticed walking in is there's a double 2 by 10 header right here that has been cut in half. Great. That tells me this is probably a supporting wall. My ceiling's going to collapse. It's a possibility. Albie told me that the job would be finished within the two weeks that I was away at my sister's. It's just a nightmare. The kids are going around with hammers, nailing in nails because they're hurting their feet. It's crazy. It is crazy. You know, she had a couple weeks away. She came home and he's just made a mess. He hadn't finished anything. The kitchen floor, he's half ripped it up. Well, he was putting in the new cupboard. What's the matter with this guy? Tell me about your husband. My fiance. Okay, so you haven't actually signed up with this guy yet. No, there's right. still time to back out. What's he thinking here? I think he just starts these things and he doesn't know what to do, so he stops. And it drives me nuts because I'm the one sitting here all day looking at this. Maybe he's thinking if I wait long enough, the kids will be old enough to help. Yeah, maybe. We're going to have to get Albie in here. i got to tear a strip off him because with a bunch of kids running around, this is not how you leave hey, the house. Hey, you can have him. I think Tammy's got it in her just to grab Albie by the throat when she's had enough. She's almost there, so now I think is the time to save this guy. I had a little chat with Tammy. They kept her waiting on a few things, eh? Six months on the rental, 14 on uh, the marriage. I don't know how you got away with that. You had a vision, apparently. Open concept. Okay, you tell me, what's the problem? I start stuff, and I start other stuff, and I don't finish what I've started. What's the other problem? Me? You don't really know what you're doing, right? No, I'm definitely not uh, a contractor. Admitting is the first thing. Yes. You got a plan anywhere? The plan from the start was to make the living space better for the family, but it didn't necessarily happen that way. First thing I noticed walking in is the floor. You got a couple of kids running around, one little one that's just about to crawl. Would you want to crawl around on this floor? I would not, definitely. Like you drop food in here, there's no five second rule. It's done. This is a bit of a hazard for children. When I was a kid, Anything that looks dangerous, I wanted to play with it. Why is this still here? Because the electricity scares the hell out of me. Albie was a little concerned about dealing with the electrical issues in here, and he had every right to be. If you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't touch it at all. Another thing I noticed is there's a double 2 by 10 beam up here in the ceiling that you've cut in half. Usually, a beam like that indicates that it's holding something up, like maybe the second story. You're... <laughs> You're right. I, I don't know what I'm doing. When I met Brian for the first time, it was definitely a shot to my ego. He has a way of putting you in your place. I'm just wondering how many beers it takes to cut that straight. About six, really. Yeah, about six. <laughs> you don't want to drink while you're doing this stuff. Absolutely. Or this is what happens. You know, Mr. Giggles there doesn't seem to realize how dangerous this is and how easy it would have been to do it while your wife's away for two weeks. I mean, save yourself the pain. Number one, we're going to sit you down and teach you how to come up with a proper plan. Number two, we get some structure issues to look at. Number three, we're going to teach you how to finish this floor off properly. We're going to teach you how not to be afraid of electricity. we got to fix this squeeze too. And finally, we're going to teach you the most important survival tool you will ever learn. Happy wife, happy life. Let's go. Oh, we got another one, but at least this guy admits he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And he doesn't have time to do it. Let's go check it out. These are the guys I told you about. So tell them what you do and don't know about this project. Uh, I know that you guys are going to save my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Now the fun begins. Start making holes. So there's a minor problem. They're water lines. If we want to open this up full concept, we got to move those. We could look at having a knee wall here opening. Leave this post in a little bit thicker. Keep these in. That way we don't have to move all your supply lines. 
So if this is a sporting wall, how do you build a knee wall in here and still support the ceiling? We can put a post here, put the proper size header right across, and that eliminates the need for this wall. Okay, Alvi, so what do we see? What used to be two two by tens. Which is part of the reason that we have a dimple in the floor and probably why your bathroom door all of a sudden doesn't want to close. Well, he cut this header out and all of a sudden his bathroom door doesn't close. must be because it's summertime. It's because you cut the friggin' beam out of the ceiling. Want my advice? <laughs> yeah, I'd like it. What, what, what should we do, Alvin? I think we should run two two by twelves here, meet him at that post this way, keeping the opening open and supporting everything. Who told him that? Just ever so gingerly, open it up a little bit. Now be careful when you're pulling down that you're not hooked on any wires. Yep. So now we have everything open, we can see what's going on. We can actually pull these feeds, we can pull them all back, rerun them and put them over here. You can pull these back, you can run all your own lines, your own wiring, but before you hook anything up, get in a professional to check it, do the inspection, make sure everything's safe, and do the final hookup to the panel. I'll tell you what, Albie, let's grab a couple of the guys, let's get this cleaned up. Let's get all these nails out of here, little pieces of drywall down, then we'll have a better idea, and we can start our plan of attack. All right, Albie, it's time to attack this electrical. Now, we found the breakers, we shut everything down. Shutting the breaker off makes working with electricity a lot safer, really. Is it done properly? No, it's not. Aluminum wiring, copper rated plug. The similar metals are going to corrode. Now, whenever you have a copper rated plug and aluminum wiring, you need a pigtail. You need some joint compound on there that's going to stop that from oxidizing. It's extremely dangerous and it's against code. It is illegal. These are wired up the same as the plug. Illegal. We've looked at some of the other fixtures. Everything is done this way. So, why leave the old aluminum wiring in there? Wire is cheap. Let's pull some new stuff. Let's replace it with copper. Let's do it properly and safely. If you've got the walls open, don't be an idiot. Do it now. Well, now we get this wire pulled, we're going to get our electrician in to hook these up. You and I have some planning to do to figure out what type of headers we're going to need here, what type of header we're going to need to bring this back up to code. That sounds like a plan. Well, let's go read a book. I've definitely bitten off more than I can chew. I did not expect ripping a wall out to be as difficult as it ended up being. Oh, look, it's a 2 by 5 and 7 eighths. <laughs> oh, no, it's a 2 by 8 Custom cut. Custom This type of project, I mean, it's not a four-month project with 20 guys. If your wife's away for two weeks, that's lots of time to get this done. He just starts these things and he doesn't know what to do, so he stops and it drives me nuts. She had a couple weeks away, she came home and he just made a mess. He hadn't finished him. Brian's teaching Albie the right way to do these things. He's not sitting back and thinking about what he should do next. Brian's telling him what he needs to do next. You know, Albie undermined the entire structure of this house by taking that wall. Usually, a beam like that indicates that it's holding something up. If Albie doesn't take a deep breath and realize how dangerous this is, I got a couple weeks to beat it into him. Literally and metaphorically. Maybe Albie just needs a kick in the butt. <laughs> okay, Albie, well... It's probably time that we should get this opened up. I know your wife wants a nice open concept. With the hatchet job that you've done here, we got to repair all of this. One of the other things we also have to take care of is the squeaky floor. It's right here. So we've measured everything up here already. Let's head outside, get all the wood cut, and bring it back, because you don't want to start taking things out before you're ready to put it back in. Okay. Man's got skill. This is going to be our beam for up top. We yeah. want to tie it together. So every 12 inches, you want okay. two or three nails. All right, Albie, so we got our king studs out of here ready to move. Now we have to cut this down. This is actually going to be the support for a header on this side. Hang on, let's open this up a little bit for you. Get the blade out. There we go. So we're going to measure off our side to 36 and a half. Now our king stud is going to come up to that. Then we'll level it up, make sure everything's nice and square. We're good on level. You see how this is going to support our header? Yeah. Woo! Breaking a sweat. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. When yeah. you're cutting, you want your off cut on the right. You see how when you cut through, the pressure goes down, see how the wood closes up on the blade? Okay. So you actually want to have the heavy side up here like this. Okay. So as you cut it, this opens up and doesn't bind the blade. Okay, now we can get our sill in. So we're going to put a jack on either side. We're going to have our jack in the middle. We're going to have our sill on top. Hey, how's it going back there? Nice bar top here. Just make sure it gets done, Brian. No, he's just lazy. Procrastinator. We like to call I'm glad it. everybody agrees. <laughs> she uh, definitely likes to put me uh, through the grind, so she's liking this. I mean, it's not easy with the newborn and the teeth and the crying, and I'm glad Brian's helping me give her the place that I wanted to give her in the first place. You see what you've done here, and you see what we've done here. We're going to apply the same principle to this wall. The only difference is we're going to build a temporary support wall to hold up your floor while we take this in. Alright, so now we have a temporary support wall in. We can pull out this abomination of a beam. Beauty. Uh, you can feel the floor just going up. That's the idea. You could actually feel all the flooring lift up when uh, we knock it into place. Shocking, yes. Hey, nail gun, finger on the trigger, point at my face. Yellow card for Albie, I'm sorry. Now, Albie, doesn't that look a little more substantial? It does look like it's holding the house up. Opening up that wall was uh, probably the biggest thing I had learned. The whole process planned out correctly wasn't that difficult. I would be confident ripping out another wall knowing if it was load-bearing or not. Let's get her done. <laughs> That's my line. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Albie, well, we finally uh, we brought down some of your flooring that you've had sitting upstairs for a few months. Why haven't you laid it? I figured I needed to fix that mess before I laid floor. You did great over there. Yes. So let's get the stuff laid down. If this was any easier, it would come already installed. Actual installation is free right now. <laughs> installation is free, Albie. I'm just going to lounge oh, here on the floor phone. and observe. You're doing a great job. I do try. <laughs> it's a floating floor. Yeah. But just tack one or two staples in the underpad so it stays there while we're walking around. We want to install it away from the wall a little bit, but we want to maintain your baseboard. We don't want to run around and do core around everywhere, right? Okay. Because that would take, I don't know, six months? Yeah, at my pace, for sure. You got to start defending yourself, man. He's sharper than I am. I don't got the comebacks, you know, sometimes, but uh, he's definitely easy going and easy to learn. All right. Now, this is a quick flooring. The way it's designed is to go up. Inside, click down together. Okay, good, good. You're you're good. Now, how easy is this? So easy a monkey could do. Why didn't the monkey do it? He was busy at work. <laughs> you got a few more rows done. I'll come see how you're doing. Hey, Albie. Yes. Good work, buddy. <laughs> All a bunch of comedians. Albie seems to be doing good. I think Brian's taught him a few things. It looks great. Floor's almost done in the living room and dining room. I could probably lay the flooring too, but I've got a four-month-old baby, and I've got two kids i got to walk to school every day. You're almost there. How do we uh, know when it's level? We look at the level. Yeah. So now we stop shimming. Stop shimming, because it's level. Right. Uh, when we first walked in here, the carpet was half ripped out, the staples everywhere, the drywall was ripped down, the electrical was just floating in uh, free space, so there's a few safety concerns right off the bat. Tell me about your husband. My fiancé. Okay, so you haven't actually signed up with this guy yet. No, there's <laughs> right. still time to back up. Tammy seems pretty quiet, but I think she's boiling underneath. There's some molten lava ready to open a can of whoop-ass on old Albie there. A lot of people, they start at a renovation and they get halfway into it, and they either lose interest or they veer off or something more exciting is on the horizon. Pick a project, learn how to do it properly, finish it. Get it done, then you can sit down, relax, you can look at it and say, wow, look how happy Tammy is because you made her happy. That's what it's all about.
Albie's doing pretty well. We have to dangle the odd carrot out for Albie. Pretty good at sneaking off when we're not looking, you know? It's kind of like, oh yeah, here we go, where to go? Albie, where to go? It's good. Now that we have your house all fixed, Albie, nothing's gonna fall down. Now what we want to do is put a bit of a breakfast bar here. We'll take a three quarter inch piece of plywood. We're gonna tile it up using the same floor tile that we use in the kitchen. We'll get this uh, shimmed and leveled and screwed down. Oh, I think we're good there. We got the impact handy. Okay, a little more. We're almost there. Looks pretty good. It does. Stay flush on the inside here. Cut end goes on the inside, or? Yep, cut end flush to the inside, because we're going to cap that. You don't want to slide your tile back towards your first tile. You yeah. squeeze all kind of mortar out of here. Okay. Do a little back buttery. Is that a technical term, or is that something you've made up? It's a textbook terminology, back butter. Want to make sure we don't have too much popping through. And we're going to apply that right there. And so our cut edge is overlapped. And our nice finished bevel edges underneath. Tape our little friend into place there. And of course, wherever you tape it, that's where it's going to stay. So you want to make sure it's in the right spot. Make a mess. Would you like a wet rag or anything? No, I, I like the messy look. Now see, we don't have enough mortar behind this. We just want to put a good dollop on the edge where we're going to apply this. Okay, now see, we're sitting on the mortar already, but we're not into place. Okay. So that's when we squish it in. Well, that's looking pretty good. Let's go. You know, applying stucco to ceiling, it's really easy. You pour a bag of stucco in a bucket, mix it up like soup, pour in the machine, turn on the compressor, and it's black. So, Albie, you're probably wondering why we're in a bubble like a couple of outbreak monkeys here. Yes. Well, it's time to stucco the ceiling. Now, in new construction, obviously, you'd stucco the ceiling before you do everything else, but... You know, the house was already built. There's not a lot we can do here. So we've wrapped everything up in plastic so we don't make a huge mess. Because typically, stucco, you get about 60% on the ceiling. The other 40% ends up on you and the floor. Not a good percentage. No. Easy machine to use. It's just an air compressor with a hopper on it. There's going to be constant air blowing out of here. When you pull the trigger, that's going to allow some of the stucco mixture, which we've mixed up already, just to drop down. It's going to fall in front of the air and... That's probably good. And make sure you throw on some glasses, too, because we're going to make a mess. You ready? I'm ready. We want to keep about, you know, 12 to 14 inches away from the ceiling. You get the idea? I do. Good. Messy job. You don't want to do it until you've prepared properly. I mean, we wrapped that place in plastic. It was like a couple of bubble boys bouncing around. And that's what you have to do, because it makes a hell of a mess. Just doing the stucco is a good example to Albie of how any renovation project should go. Preparation is 90%, and actually doing it is the last 10%. Just shoot it here, right up through here. The stuccoing was a lot messier than I had originally thought it would be. It took probably three times as long to bag it off than it did to uh, stucco it. Planning is as important as the job itself. Pretty dirty work, eh? It is. Yeah, you did a really great job. Well, thank you. Let's go clean up. What do you think? Good job, honey. Yo, yeah. <laughs>first got here this place was ready to fall down it looked like a dump i mean it looked like someone had come in and said uh I'd tear half my floor up. it was terrible now with a lot of albie's hard work you walk in you look around and it's, wow nice floor nice walls uh support structurally sound it's incredible i think one of the things we've taught him is that you can't do everything at the same time you have to pick a project finish it move on to the next thing i think he's got that Job, honey. Yo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look at that on Looks awesome. What's your favorite part? It's done. 
So before we arrived, what did you want to see? I wanted a floor where it's kid durable. We wanted the little breakfast bar, and I just wanted my house back to normal. Looking around the project a few months ago, how did you feel about the house then and about I think he did a good job. Hearing that from Tammy, what have you learned throughout the past few weeks? Set out with a plan, finish one thing before you start the next. Now I can start the basement. <laughs> After okay. the wedding. After the wedding, yeah. Well, look around. You got the skills now, so there's no excuse anymore. I appreciate everything. It was an enjoyable experience. Well, it was great fun for us, Tammy. Yeah. Thank it was you, great Brian. to meet you all. Oh, come on. <laughs> You're very welcome here. Oh, okay. Guys, enjoy. Thank Hope you. the kids enjoy. Take care. Does it look nice? What do you think? It's good. It's good? And I did it. Yeah, I know you did it. <laughs>